So, uh, Carolina, you have been appointed uh, as WHO uh, country office in Romania since August a few months ago. Uh, I would like to know which uh, would be your priorities in WHO team uh, here in Romania in, uh, in the next period uh, when we are talking about public health. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for this question. So, first of all, I'm on a very steep, steep learning curve still. I'm discovering a new country, I'm discovering a new context, I'm discovering a new team. Um, and uh, one of our key priorities, obviously, is WHO, being a normative and uh, um, standards and guidelines setting organization, is to work very closely with the Ministry of Health and to provide the uh, knowledge and expertise that uh, we have gathered on a variety of topics uh, to the Ministry of Health. Um, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed um, uh, getting acquainted with the colleagues at the Ministry and I see that there's a very strong commitment on their side in order to improve access to healthcare services and more specifically access to quality healthcare services here in Romania um, uh, across the country, including the rural areas. So when we look at um, where is our added value? Uh, WHO is, again, an organization whereby we have a certain level of knowledge available within the country. So I have the privilege of working with a group of very smart uh, colleagues. Uh, some of them are physicians, others have different disciplines. Um, as well as we can then also mobilize expertise from our regional office, which is in Copenhagen, or from headquarters. So WHO Romania is not a very big country office yet. Um, we are trying to increase our capacities in order to better support the Ministry of Health and, um, and the Romanian population um, in the coming years. So this for me is my personal challenge. When we look at um, the uh, areas of priority, there is a, a variety of them, um, just to name a few. For example, um, when we look at the communicable diseases, obviously here encouraging access to vaccines as uh, we are doing today, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity, is an important part of our work. So the whole communication around this is important. Um, we also sensitize healthcare workers on, on how to best administer some, some of those vaccines or what are the vaccination schemes, etc. So our contact and our engagement with the healthcare workers is also important. But this is also true for other areas such as the non-communicable diseases, the cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension and, uh, and cancers. Um, so we, we try to also engage at that level. Then we have a few areas where we put particular attention to, which is, for example, mental health. Um, we know that since the last few years that mental health is gaining in attention. We also try to make sure that, or to support um, governments in their effort to changing that this is not a taboo anymore, to advocate for people to seek services early on and to just um, put this as a, one of the key topics or areas that we would like to discuss. Then we have um, colleagues that look at sexual and reproductive health and me being a, a woman, more particularly a mother, obviously this is an area that I find particularly fascinating um, as well and I think it speaks to many of us. So overall, I think WHO here, um, we will continue to further engage in a number of those activities. We are also looking at supporting um, access to quality healthcare services for the refugees. And here I'd like to thank particularly the uh, Ministry of Health and the government of Romania and the population of Romania um, for their warm welcome and for ensuring that those groups are actually able to access important healthcare services um, where they are. I think it matters and the sense of solidarity um, that has, is being demonstrated uh, across the country is, is um, very touching as well. So um, this is also an area where we will continue uh, engaging in the future. So all that to say is that WHO doesn't have one simple mandate. We have a wide variety and a wide range of topics where we engage in, um, uh, as well as, for example, things like 
strengthening the healthcare workforce, right? Uh, we need to train doctors and nurses and midwives on certain topics. Uh, when we look at quality of care, what does that mean? How can we improve quality of care? Or how do we digitalize the whole system? So these are big building blocks um, um, that we are trying to delve into as well in the coming years um, in supporting the Ministry of Health. But ultimately, so, Despite the diversity of all those topics, in the end, it all boils down to one thing. What matters most is health. So for as long as we are healthy, we can then engage in many other activities and uh, a variety of things that we enjoy doing. We can go to work, we can go and study, we can go and play our sports, we can travel. So I think um, we always, or sometimes, underestimate the importance of health and personally in the mornings when I wake up I try to just have a moment and to reflect and to think okay how do I feel today and I'm like, yeah, I feel okay. healthy today I'm happy today so uh, and that's how I try to start my days it's not exactly how I feel every evening but um, at, at least, least I in try. the morning <laughs> yes and going back to to keep us uh, healthy and um, uh, in this period uh, uh, of uh, influenza season which uh, is coming uh, do you have or who has some key messages going back to to our main topic today mm -hmm. yeah allow me just to reiterate um, the key preventative measures that we can take so first is get vaccinated um, if you can. Uh, more importantly, if you're part of the at-risk groups, please get vaccinated. If you're a healthcare worker, get vaccinated. If you're a person working in a crowded setting, get vaccinated. If you're an elderly person, please get vaccinated. If you're pregnant, etc. cetera. Um, if you have a disease uh, that um, um, would require or would, protect, would require additional protection for you to just um, be as healthy as you can be, please get vaccinated, um, same for the kids. Um, because the more we get vaccinated or the, the higher the vaccination coverage, um, the more protected we will be overall and the less we will transmit um, diseases or at least the less we will be a burden on a healthcare system that is already stretched uh, in many, many countries. Um, so because we are at lesser risk of a severe form of the disease. So again, let's put those chances on our side. Um, maintain, wear our masks when we can, when we, well, particularly when we are ill. Um, adopt hand hygiene practices, maintain them, keep doing it, keep your physical distance if, if you can. Um, and, uh, and yes, so I think it's just to reiterate that we have a number of tools at our hands it's our decision to use them. Um, and I think if we all adopt those best practices, we will have a smooth winter and then see you next summer. <laughs> Hope to see you soon again in our editorial headquarters, sharing with us some results of the priorities of WHO. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the time.